Hello, good morning, and welcome back to the garden, y'all. Now, it is my firm belief that there are two types of gardeners in this world. One gets to happily joke about how they simply cannot eat all the summer squash, all the zucchini that they're growing, and they just need to give it away to their neighbors because they cannot bear to bake another batch of zucchini bread. And the second, like me, like many of us, I suspect, is the type that just can't figure out why their zucchini plants are stunted and wilted and not setting fruit and not productive and are getting absolutely destroyed by pest bugs. If that second type of gardener sounds more like you, I really, really truly think this video is going to help you out because it made such a positive difference in our zucchini garden. Let's get into it. This variety right here is called Green Machine, and it kind of makes me think of something my toddler would name his toy monster truck. But in addition to the very, very cool name, Green Machine is often considered one of, if not the fastest maturing varieties of zucchini out there. You can be harvesting food from a Green Machine plant in as little as 45 days. Just for reference there, we've got another variety, one of our favorites, the patty pan squash, the yellow scallop squash, and it was planted at the same time, and it hasn't even started putting off any food, and we're gonna be harvesting these within the week. So they are indeed very, very fast. And that right there is key number one to our strategy today, a super fast maturing variety like Green Machine. We're gonna come back to that in a second because key number two for us is Green Machine's outstanding disease resistance package. And disease resistance package is just sort of fancy seed seller talk for the fact that a variety like Green Machine is just pretty good at not getting sick from common squash diseases particularly powdery mildew. If you know that your squash plants tend to get covered in that icky white residue every year, a plant like Green Machine is gonna be really helpful in combating that. And we're not done with this guy quite yet, but I wanna move on to another plant, this one right here. This incredible variety right here is called Dunha, and it's also pretty resistant to diseases. It's also pretty early maturing, but those aren't the things that make it such a game changer. This one is incredible. This one is magical, because it is actually parthenocarpic. That means Dunha Dunha, unlike the vast majority of zucchini plants, can grow the little fruits at the base of a female flower. Recall that zucchini have both male and female flowers to a full mature fruit without ever receiving any pollen from a male flower. In other words, it doesn't need to be pollinated. Now, Parthenocarpy is actually a term we see a lot with cucumbers, like this variety right here, Corinto, and this one right here, Unagi. But for whatever reason, Parthenocarpy hasn't really caught on in the world of zucchini plants, at least not for us home gardeners, at least not yet. This is a male flower that I just plucked off a zucchini plant, and usually we would need a pollinator insect to grab some of the pollen or transfer some of the pollen from this flower onto a female flower, like this one you can see opening up so beautifully over there. Now, obviously with a plant like Dune Hall, we don't need that to happen at all, which is great not only because it saves us from having to worry about if they're not pollinator insects, but for another important reason as well. See, many of us live in climates where pollen is simply not viable during the height of summer. It's too hot. Plants like us don't want to live on the surface of the sun, and pollen doesn't work well when temperatures soar into the 90s or even the high 80s and stay there for sustained periods of time, which means many of us don't get a very good harvest during the height of summer when it's simply too hot for that pollen to work, even if it is successfully transferred from a male flower to a female flower. But a parthenocarpic plant like Dunha at least partially bypasses the issue of overheated pollen by just not requiring pollination to set fruit in the first place. Now, more importantly, a parthenocarpic variety like Dunha gives us an incredible tool in the fight against pest insects like squash beetles and squash vine borer beetles, two of the worst insect netting. Now, realistically, you can start any squash variety under insect netting, but typically you're gonna have to remove that insect netting at some point to let the pollinator insects in to do their thing. You can leave that insect netting on and you'll have healthy plants or at least healthy against pest damage, but you're gonna have nothing to harvest. Not the best outcome, right? But if you take that insect netting off, well, then you're exposing the plant to those pollinator insects, but you're also exposing them to the pest insects. Again, not the best outcome, but not with Dunha. With Dunha, you can just go ahead and leave that insect netting on for the plant's entire life cycle. Now, if that sounds too good to be true, good. I'm glad you're skeptical. I'm just a dude making videos on YouTube because I like gardening. So let me show you some real research on the topic. This table right here is the result from a field trial run through Cornell University, where they actually grew a number of different summer squash varieties, including some that were parthenocarpic and some that weren't. And they actually physically bagged the female flowers on those zucchinis 
in order to ensure that no pollinator insects could actually get to those flowers. They were completely covered. And then they counted how many of the fruits on those various plants were actually able to mature to a full size. How many of them were still able to set fruit even though there was no chance of proper pollination. You can see that Dunha here took the second place. It did really well with about 83% of the bagged flowers still setting fruit. But whatever variety you choose, the point is, is that this idea of summer squash that can set fruit even when completely covered, when netted or bagged, has been well validated. And the last thing I'd like to direct your attention to here is that far right column, the percent fruit set of bagged flowers. And just to indicate that Parthenocarpi is not, it's not a binary trait, it's not all or nothing. And that's even true in cucumbers, right? From this field trial, they actually saw everything from 100% effectiveness, that golden glory variety there at the top, down to 6%. And who knows, maybe that was just an artifact mistake. And then of course, there's lots with 0% effectiveness, 0% fruit set in those bagged flowers, which is what we would expect from those traditional non-parthenocarpic varieties. I just wanted to show you that so that you aren't surprised if you grow a parthenocarpic variety and you still see some of those female fruits wither and fall off. That is still going to happen. There are lots of other reasons that a fruit can fail to mature. So what's the takeaway here? Well, growing a variety like Dunha, plus some super cheap insect netting, is a very easy and very effective solution against the bugs for the entire growing season. This ability to set fruit without pollination is the third and final key in our plan to unlocking healthier summer squash plants. But if for whatever reason insect netting isn't a great solution for you, I totally get it. Don't stress it. Remember how I mentioned how this green machine sets fruit super quickly? Well, we can also use that trait to work around the bugs. What you'll need to do is plant a fast maturing zucchini variety as early in the year as you can safely to get a harvest before the pest insects are really active in your area and then plant another round when they go dormant. For the most effectiveness, you need to know what bug you're dealing with and when it's active in your area. It's really that combination of everything we've looked at today that is so effective. You know, growing that really early maturing variety like Green Machine right at the beginning of the season to beat the bugs to the punch and growing that parthenocarpic variety plus some insect netting like Dunha in the middle of the season so that you can still get those good, healthy plants with big harvest when those insects are most active and then growing that really disease resistant variety again like Green Machine towards the end of the season in late summer or late fall that can really stand up against powdery mildew. That combination is what is so powerful. Now obviously we like Green Machine plus Dunha to accomplish this, but there are actually a lot of other varieties that fit that criteria may fit your garden even better. Just look for one variety that is very early to set fruit and is very disease resistant, particularly against powdery mildew, something like this Green Machine right here, and one more variety that is parthenocarpic, like this Dunha variety right here. One downside to the strategy I've laid out today is most plants that meet those criteria are hybrids, and lots of gardeners prefer open-pollinated heirloom varieties. Luckily, there is another variety called Tromboncino that's not quite the same, but can accomplish a lot of the same things for us. Now, unfortunately, I can't actually show you a Tromboncino plant because I'm not growing any this year, but it is a very effective variety in the fight against heat and insects for two reasons. The first is Tromboncino is not really a true summer squash. It is not in the same species, Pepo, as the other squashes that we've been looking at today. It's actually a Cucurbita moscata. And Moscata is that same species as the Black Futsu winter squash that I'm always going on about on this channel. One of my favorites, we're growing it right next to this plant actually. And the nice thing about Moscata is it's probably the species that is toughest against insects, particularly squash vine borer beetles. But growing a Moscata also means that you really need to be on top of your harvest with Tromboncino. If you let those fruits grow too big and you don't harvest them when they're zucchini size, they're just gonna grow into a full-fledged winter squash and not be a good replacement for the true summer squash varieties that we've been talking about today. Tromboncino is also inherently just very heat tolerant. It's not parthenocarpic like Dunha here, so it does still require pollination from that male flower to the female flower. But generally speaking, it's gonna be able to do so at higher temperatures. It just happens to be a plant that withstands the pressure from heat a little bit better than most. As for why we are not growing Tromboncino this year, well, it's just a really 
big plant. It's a big vining plant, like all of the winter squash that we're already growing and we dedicate so much space to. So I prefer, just based on the design and space constraints that we have in our garden, these more compact bushing varieties in the Peppo species. Now, before you go seed shopping for some new varieties, I do wanna share one more summer squash growing tip that has really, really helped us out. Earlier in this video, I went over how you can grow two separate rounds of zucchini plants in order to deal with pests like squash vine borer beetles or squash bugs. But actually, just about everyone should be doing that, even if you don't deal with a lot of pest bugs. I have genuinely no idea why this doesn't get talked about more often, but summer squash like this dune right here have relatively short life cycles. And most growing guides on summer squash and even seed packet descriptions just talk about how they'll die when the frost kills them off, which is true technically, but it misses the point entirely. At that point, they're no longer going to even be productive. And really, that is totally appropriate for describing indeterminate perennial plants that we actually grow as annuals, like all of the tomatoes we have growing back here behind us, or growing really slow growing annual plants like the melons that we have growing on the other side of this yard. But it's really not a good way to think about summer squash's life cycle, just totally different. Now, I can't give you an exact timeline because that's going to differ by climate and variety and disease pressure and insect pressure and so many other variables. But generally speaking, a summer squash is going to become productive and it's gonna stay productive for a few weeks to a month, then it's just gonna naturally taper off. Not because something is going wrong, per se, but simply because the plant is getting old and that's how its life cycle functions. Which is why you're gonna to wanna to plant multiple rounds of zucchini plants. And practically speaking, there are kind of two ways to do that. You can do what we do and just plant a bunch of seedlings all at once, twice in the season, or even three times in the season if you have a long enough growing season. Take out all the old plants and replace them with all the new plants. Or if you want a kind of more practical home garden solution, you can just plant a couple zucchini plants every few weeks and then just slowly rotate your harvest through those plants throughout the entire growing season. Either way honestly works pretty well. Okay, now it is time to go seed shopping, or at least that is what I'm gonna go do. Happy gardening, y'all. None of this is gonna work if you're eating the leaves off my squash plants.